The following program was produced by the students of the Brian Lamb School of Communication at Purdue University. On this edition of Fast Track, we meet one student fighting cancer and the incredible journey he's taken. I've been blessed immensely, you know. Um, I shouldn't be at school right now, but I am at school right now while getting treatments and that doesn't happen. We'll show you the history of a Lebanon restaurant and what to expect to eat at the converted jail. And we'll follow a Purdue Cheer member on their journey to find the perfect partner. Fast Track starts now. another edition of Fast Track, bringing all things Purdue to you. I'm Danielle DiCapua. And I'm Riley Kristen. For nearly four years now, Purdue's Boilermaker Wish Program has been granting wishes to kids affected by a physical adversity, disability, or life-threatening illness connected to the university. But during that time, the number of wishes began to fall. So this year, the push is on to turn things around. Brad Pushkar found out how new leadership is giving the program a big boost. As starting setter on the volleyball team, Ashley Evans is a key piece in helping the hitters on the team. She's also a key piece in helping the community. Through the Boilermaker Wish program, Evans has helped less fortunate members of the Purdue community. Before becoming president of the program, she saw the slow decline it had taken since its founding in 2013. The program kind of fell off the map and we weren't doing you know what we needed to do to keep the program afloat and so I kind of took charge of you know bringing the program back and gathering a group of student athletes to join me on this journey through the year. One member of that group is fellow setter Lexi Dorn. Dorn's brother was a member of the Ohio State volleyball team who had a fan with a disability travel with the team during their national championship run. She and Evans want to make something like that happen here. And so I'm hoping that with the videos and the social media that we've been using this year, it's been a huge help to get the word out. And I hope that the juniors and the sophomores that are you know, currently in the program now can take over. Evans is a senior and will graduate this year. But Dorn is already looking to help keep the program moving forward. I've already talked to Ashley about a lot of the things that like I think we could do. We had one um, person like wish to go to with basketball for their trip to Hawaii. But there's a lot of expenses that go with that, and so that's not like a practical wish that we can grant yet. Not only raising money, but raising support from fellow athletes. Right now I think we're just eight people, and we're trying to get more people involved because the more student athletes we have involved, the more like we can do more wishes and grant more stuff. So, At the end of the day, Evans says she can see the effects of their work and the smiles on the faces they help. It just makes my heart so warm inside knowing that these kids or these adults, you know, who face challenges on a daily basis are you know, having these experiences that make them incredibly happy. And I think that's the biggest thing we're trying to do is just kind of make a Boilers day that is a huge fan of all Purdue. For Fast Track, I'm Brad Pushkar. You can keep up with the Granted Wishes on the program's Facebook and Instagram accounts. Now to our next story. Students face all kinds of challenges during their time here, which can slow some students down. But when one freshman found out he had cancer before attending Purdue, he didn't let that challenge stop him. Brad Pushkar found out how that student is keeping his head up and using his experience to help others. My you know, first semester freshman year has been unlike anything that I expected it to be. It's been a crazy start to Tyler Trent's college career. He's joined the paint crew, camped out for homecoming football, and battled against bone cancer. The first thing I told my oncologist was, just so you know, I'm going to school, and you're not stopping me. And he hasn't stopped. Tyler is having experiences not many other students can say they have, like camping out for football games. We set up right there under, like right in that corner right there. Like kind of run, run under that speaker in a way? Yeah, no, exactly under that speaker, right in the corner. And being an honorary team captain. I had said to the Purdue Cancer Research guys, you know, hey, if you, if you need someone to be the face of Hammer Down Cancer, I, I'm here. I'm a student. Yeah. And through that, they, were, they just contacted, um, I'm not even sure who they contacted, but contacted someone. And then, you know, someone from athletics emailed me and said, hey, you know, do you want to be the honorary team captain for, for the football game? And I was like, absolutely. 
Others in his situation might let the challenges overwhelm them, and he respects that. People tend to suppress their experiences and their stories, their hardships, um, because they view them as a negative thing. And um, they're not. Um, everyone is shaped off their experiences, whether they are positive or whether they are negative. It changes who you are and, um, and how you act. And that's why he wants others to speak up around him as well. I'm not going out of my way necessarily to say, oh, I'm the kid with cancer, and you should listen to my story. Because I want to listen to your story. And I want to hear about your experiences and how they've changed and how they shaped you. Because they're really important. Former basketball head coach Gene Cady shares the same feelings on cancer as Tyler. we got to whip that crap some way. Some way, somehow. Yep. <laughs> Keep giving money. <laughs> But even before it's whipped, Tyler will keep moving forward. For Fast Track, I'm Brad Pushkar. We have to take a short break, but after this, we will hear about how one Boilermaker alum has turned his passion into a career. Stay with us. Purdue Liberal Arts is really a fantastic place, mostly because we empower students to really go out and participate in democracy, participate in modern society. I teach African American history mostly, but also 20th century United States history as well. My research focuses largely on race, class, social movements, social justice, civil rights. So many of the issues that we confront today are largely played out in the course of African American history. The narrative itself illustrates to students in profound ways. Civil rights is a really outstanding subject area for students to come to understand not so much the past, but really the present. It's amazing to see the influence that we have. If you're a student who would like to save thousands of dollars and also show the world that you're a real go-getter, here's a way to do it. I hope every graduate of our College of Liberal Arts shares my intense pride in the college for its new innovation, the Degree in Three program. Special congratulations to all those enterprising the liberal arts students who want to come get a first-rate liberal arts education and do it on a faster track. Welcome back. For many Americans, swimming is a sport we usually hear a lot about during the Olympics, and that's about it. But here at Purdue, the sport has ignited the passion of a Boiler alum. Sonia Schlobum shows us how he surprised even himself, and it changed his life. Dan Ross, head swimming coach at Purdue University, originally came to follow his father's footsteps and study chemical engineering. But that path quickly changed as Ross found his passion in something other than school. After a couple of years, I realized that the swimming was my passion and working with athletes was my passion and not chemical engineering. So I, I, I switched majors and really decided I was going to become a swimming coach, having no idea that I would be doing this. Ross decided to swim at Purdue, a sport that he'd been competing in since he was young. His decision to swim collegiately would impact the trajectory of his entire life. And then I was fortunate to be allowed to be a walk-on on the swim team and that that probably changed my life. After walking on the swim team, Dan Ross never left the pool. He has been a positive influence in the lives of many swimmers that have come and gone over his 30 years as a swim coach. Sean Gartland came all the way from California to swim for Dan Ross. Dan's like one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in the country, and he's been doing it for so long that he has the knowledge and experience to really just make you the best athlete that you can be. Dan has been recognized as the Big Ten Coach of the Year in three different decades, 1988, 1997, and most recently in 2009. He is also the Dean of Big Ten Swim Coaches. While Ross considers himself a very down-to-earth, goofy, and fun-loving coach, he does have a strict recipe for success. My, my philosophy was when I was first coaching, I was like, I do 52% right and 48% wrong, but I believe 100% in my 52%, so I'm going to have some kind of success. But I think you have a passion, you believe in something, you'll have success. Reporting for Fast Track News, this is Sonia Schlobaum.
Even though most people think of Purdue cheerleading as the individuals on the sidelines of sporting events, one male cheerleader is gearing up for redemption. I talked with Evan Long all about it. Last year was the first time going through Partner Stunt Nationals for me. It was a very different experience, not really something I'd ever looked into what it would be like, and I went into it kind of blind. And how do you get to compete in the college cheerleading Partner Stunt Nationals? They have to send in a routine, a one minute routine set to music and it cannot be edited, it must be a continuous shot. The judges all watch the videos and they judge them and then they rank them and then uh, they take about half. We ended up qualifying fifth for nationals. We haven't had a top five finish ever actually in the history of our program. So there was a lot of stress going into nationals to see if uh, the young pups are gonna be able to perform at all like we had in the videos. We ended up finishing sixth, which was not quite what we were looking for. We were looking to finish you know, as high as we had taped. Um, but we were overall very happy with that finish, with some of the people that finished above us, just really, really talented. So, I mean, to take sixth place uh, against some of the best in the world uh, is really, really uh, a great opportunity for them, and they did a really good job. So what's Evan going to do this year? Courtney graduated. I do know Evan has been working with a couple of the new girls on the team and uh, is looking to get a new partner for this upcoming year. I'd say I probably kind of have looked at five or six different people at this point. If I was chosen to be his partner, it would mean a lot just because I'm a freshman and um, it's my first year doing co-ed stunting, so it'd be crazy just to move that quickly. I don't want to go backwards at all. Last year the goal was top five and fell one short. This year I want to finish top three and I don't want that to be an option. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Danielle DiCapua. Nationals will be on January 12th, and we're looking forward to seeing if Evan and his partner place in the top three like they wanted. Still ahead on Fast Track, we go behind the counter to show you a butcher shop you may not even know exists. It's right here on campus. We'll show you what makes it so special and how sales are helping support Purdue students and research. One of the things that I really enjoy about being a professor at Purdue and being able to interact with students is that oftentimes I get emails from students several years on after they've graduated saying like, your course changed the way that I look at sport. Your course changed the way that I think about our society. My research focuses on the amount of coverage and the type of coverage of men's and women's sports on televised news and sports highlight shows. What kinds of stories are the media telling about sports and then how does that inform and impact the way we think about gender and race? My freshman year, everything was about boys football and boys basketball. We didn't have the language or the ability to articulate or to know better that if we were supporting the boys team, we should have been supporting the girls team as well. So I was really interested in kind of learning more about the cultural aspects of why some of those gender differences might exist. The problem that I'm trying to solve is how do we address the larger inequalities within sport that relate specifically to sociocultural factors. For me, that's important. It's just exposing students to a different way of thinking about and seeing their world. Being involved in the three-year program at Purdue made it easier to say to myself, I could get done in three years. The three-year program helped save me a ton of money. In not completing my fourth year, I would save around $30,000. It will give you an advantage, if anything. Doing the three-year program at Purdue has shown me that I have motivation to do whatever it takes to get my degree. Inside the heart of Purdue's campus, there's a place you can't miss out on if you're a meat lover. Fast Track Swanda Yi went to the Boilermaker Butcher Block to see what the shop had to offer. What? It's an exciting day for Haley Oliver, oh, an perfect. associate Thanks, professor you. of food science. Look at this beauty. Oh my gosh, so this is one of them. She's planning to use these pork legs for making prosciutto, an Italian dry cured ham. So this big guy is going to get packed in salt. 
It'll come out in about six months and we'll take a look at it and hopefully it'll be on its way to prosciutto. <laughs> Professor Oliver got those pork legs from Boromaker Butcher Block, a place located at Smith Hall that sells Purdue bread and feed meat. The manager took us on an inside tour of the facility. So in here right now we have a lot of beef and pork. Um, obviously your, your, your higher end pork cuts are going to be some of your loin chops. Um, your darker colored meats here in front of us are your beef cuts. We also have quite a bit of chicken and lamb right now. Um, chicken primarily is from some harvest that we had earlier this year. Uh, we also had some students that processed some this fall. Um, over here on the far side we have a lot of ground products. We obviously have a really large selection of ground beef patties, regular ground beef of, of varying in different leannesses depending on which one you get. We have a lot, a big volume of different varieties of brats and sausages. Uh, some of our most, our biggest, largest sales are always in the, the brat and sausage. Over here in our fresh area right now, we've got some lamb chops. We have a big diversity of products as far as unique products. We sell a lot of fresh pork side, a lot of beef shank, um, a lot of high-end, really, really good quality loin steaks in the beef side. Um, a lot of products you can't find everywhere. We try to have a diverse kind of product selection because we have obviously diversities in income, but just diversities of, of customer base. We try to service them all. We also went where customers don't normally get to go to get a better understanding of how the process works. So in this room right here, um, this is where the major cutting of all the carcasses occurs. A lot of the packaging um, occurs some in this area but then into the next room. Primarily we bring the carcasses in here and then break them down into smaller portions, what we call primals and subprimals. Um, but we do do some of the finished processing in here as well. Um, yesterday this room was actually used, we had the National um, FFA Meats Judging Contest, so this whole area was full of uh, high schoolers literally from across the country. I believe there was upwards of 40 some states that were represented in that competition. Um, so we had a 150 or so students come through here. Um, so today we converted a little bit closer back to what our normal configuration is. But this primarily is what you're gonna see in most facilities. Um, have some different cutting tables, saws, grinders, uh, mixers, scaling devices as well. For customers like Oliver, the butcher provides a unique experience. As a customer, um, you know, one thing I really appreciate um, about having the Butcher Block, one, so close to my building in Food Science just across the street, is the personal relationship that we have um, with the students and also with Blaine Brown, who's the, the manager of the meat lab or director of the meat lab. Um, I can find some really great specialty cuts. If I'm looking for a whole pork leg, I can't usually find that at, at one of our regular retail grocery stores, but I can find it here and we can have a great discussion exactly what we're looking for and kind of have a great conversation about how to get that done. Next year, the Butch Block will move to its new home. We're basically doubling our retail space, making it more of a, a more modernized kind of feel where can, the customers can come in and do a little bit of their own shopping themselves and or ask questions and select cuts from our student employees as well. And customers like Oliver are looking forward to it. Oh, I'm excited. Um, uh, as, as a college student at the University of Wyoming, we had a, a world-class meat lab and I'm looking forward to being able to support in any way that I can uh, the upstart of the new facility and the new building. Reporter for Fast Track, I'm Chuan Yi. On this special Halloween edition of Purdue Eats, Reporter Ashton Adi and I went all the way to Lebanon, Indiana to tour the old Boone County Jail. That's now a restaurant called Cell Block 104. From 1938 to 1992, this building was the Boone County Jail. To clarify, this was a jail, not a prison. So it housed both men and women. The only way you could talk to someone in the other side that were in these rooms was beyond this was here. This is how you'd pass information, pass food. During the tour, Michael told me how the sheriff was able to transport the inmates for trial. There's actually a tunnel underneath our building that goes to the courthouse. And when the inmates weren't on trial, the jail is divided by length of stay. It would have been for 
People who were only in here for maybe a couple of days had to go to court, got caught, or like a drunk tank, basically. But the long-term living space was limited. When you had free time, this is all you got to play in. Not much room. Yep, 16 feet by four feet. And for some, it was even worse. If you'd like to follow me this way, I'd like to show you solitary confinement. Used for the inmates who violated jail regulations, their stay could last anywhere from days to weeks to months. And years later, it's all still here and it all still works. Even after all these years from 1938, a lot of things in this building still function. So this is the same system that was used in Alcatraz. And along with the building structures, the inmates' memories were also preserved. Now anything you see that's in black, that has a black frame around it, is original to the building. That is original artwork done by the inmates. And now guests are encouraged to leave their mark as well. I asked Michael what the most memorable story from the jail was, and it was neither the inmates nor the sheriff, but the sheriff's wife. For a few years, the sheriff's wife would actually cook the food for the inmates. While Michael and the rest of the staff at Cell Block 104 strive to preserve those stories, they're also working to add on to the building. The ceiling there has been cut out, and there is a piece of green tin over it. That will eventually be our staircase that leads into a cigar bar. Ashton Audie in Lebanon, reporting for Fast Track. We'll hear more from Cell Block 104 right after this quick commercial break. Purdue Liberal Arts is really a fantastic place, mostly because we empower students to really go out and participate in democracy, participate in modern society. I teach African American history mostly, but also 20th century United States history as well. My research focuses largely on race, class, social movements, social justice, civil rights. So many of the issues that we confront today are largely played out in the course of African American history. The narrative itself illustrates to students in profound ways. Civil rights is a really outstanding subject area for students to come to understand not so much the past, but really the present. It's amazing to see the influence that we have. Welcome back to Fast Track. Before the break, we took a look at a new restaurant in Lebanon that used to be a jail. Now I had to get the inside scoop on the refreshments Cell Block 104 had to offer. So we are making pork tenderloin, and you said you guys are known for this, right? Yes. Uh so our beer battered, breaded or uh, battered tenderloin. Um, it's a little different than a common just breaded tenderloin. A lot of people around here want just a regular breaded tenderloin that they pound out to the size of four buns. Um, so we wanted to make ours a little different. So we decided to go with the beer batter. Um, just a little bit of different flavor. And then instead of pounding it out to you know the size of four or five buns, we decide to keep it a little bit smaller, uh, so you actually get more of the taste of the meat with the breading, and not just like you're biting into a big chunk of fro or uh, fried breading. Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, so in that mix, was it just beer? Uh, it's just uh, yeah, pretty. It's a uh, seasoned flour with a uh, beer and some salt and pepper. So it's pretty basic and simple, but. You let the meat and everything speak for itself and not try to cover up the, you know, the fresh pork that we get in. So how long are you going to fry this? Uh, this will just fry for about three and a half minutes. Uh, you just basically until it's golden brown. By the time it's golden brown and floating, uh, it's done. Just dress it up with lettuce, tomato, onion, and pickle. No mayo or mustard? Or um, like we'll ask them as they go to the table. All of our stuff is pre-portioned so they can put on their mayonnaise and mustard at the table. Awesome.
Cell Block 104 is a jail turned into a restaurant. <laughs> and it's also a distillery. So this is the absinthe frappe. We use one ounce of absinthe, 10 mint leaves, and then I do two ounces of house-made simple syrup, five seconds of medium, this is just a little bit of soda water. Kind of get some of the sugar off the outside of the glass. All right. Gorgeous. And then we top it off with the rest of the soap. Would you like to try it? Sure. <laughs> well, thank you. You're very welcome. I wish I could say cheers, but <laughs> cheers to life, right? <laughs> That's not as strong as I thought it would be. It's a, it's an anise taste, so you get a little bit of black definitely, licorice, definitely. but the mint and the simple syrup actually just kind of pull it back, yeah. and then the soda water gives you a little bit more of the fizzy texture, so that way it's 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 minty, it's anisey. But it's, uh, I've had people describe it as soothing. You know, it it's, is, yeah. It's nice, cool at the back of your throat. Yeah, all the flavors so. are really balanced well, but you can definitely taste that licorice flavor. It's really good. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank that. Thank you. It was a really cool restaurant. It was a really unique um, space that I haven't really seen before. Yeah, it was crazy that the like everyone eating in the restaurant, like the booths were actually in a cell. That's I've awesome. I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, while Danielle was in Lebanon learning all about Cell Block 104, I was on campus learning about all of you. I'm back on campus again today for Campus Talk. We are in the thick of fall. Halloween has just passed, Thanksgiving is on its way, and Christmas is in the not so distant future. So I took to campus to ask Purdue about some of their favorite fall things. Okay, what's your name? Reese. Jacob Johnson. Matt Babich. Allie. McKenzie. What's your favorite thing about fall? Uh, probably getting to drink coffee and not sweating. Not sweating? Yeah, just because, you know, whenever you drink hot coffee and it's hot outside, then you sweat. Yeah, but what about when you're walking to class and you're all bundled up, you walk into class and then you start sweating? You can just take off your jacket. Uh, it used to be the weather, but it's freaking cold here now, so I would say when the leaves change color. The clothes. The leaves changing colors and falling on the ground. Makes for good pictures. Uh, it's the weather, like the trees changing colors, I like the feeling of the whole thing, football. Have you ever been to a pumpkin patch before? Uh, yeah, back at home. No. Uh, it's been a while, but I have. Yes. Did you like it? Yes. They're just really big and open, but the pumpkins are cool. What were you for Halloween? A zombie. Chewbacca. Lovely. <laughs> a referee. I was a referee. Um, I was a cat. If you could carve anything into a pumpkin, no complications at all, what would you carve? <laughs> uh... That's a really tough question. Uh, I'll just carve the Purdue P. Daniel Radcliffe. Why? Because I love Harry Potter. So why didn't you go as a Harry Potter character? Because I did that last year. My dog's face. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's hard. I don't know. Maybe a ghost. That's just a simple answer. <laughs> just a normal face. Like a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Thanksgiving or Halloween? Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, no doubt. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas. 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 Thanksgiving. Ooh. All that food. How early is too early to start playing Christmas music? Never too early. It's never too early to play Christmas music. Even in like June? That's the best time. It's never too early. That's the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> she just goes, never. <laughs> Don't ever no, play Christmas no, music. I feel like it's never too early. Okay. Uh, you cannot play it before December. Before December? Oh, uh, yeah. You cannot play it before December. Not even like midway through November? No, no. December's like the cutoff. Well, that's it for this week. For these stories and more, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Purdue University Fast Track. 
I'm Riley Kristen. And I'm Danielle DeCampola. We'll see you next time.